Hi, I'm David Ackert, and I have a question for you. Given your network of friends, family, clients, and colleagues, the hundreds, perhaps even thousands of people who know you and know what you do, why aren't you getting more referrals? And what can you do to maximize your referral potential? We're going to take the next six minutes and answer that question. First, let's set up some terminology. The cold market refers to all the possible buyers of your services in the world, most of whom you don't know. The warm market is the subset of people you do know. Within the warm market, you have three categories of professional contacts. Fans, allies, and clients. Each of these are unique referral sources and respond to different incentives. Fans are people who refer you business because you do such an exceptional job for their clients and colleagues that they feel they've been of service just to spread the good word about you. Fans could be clients or they could just be friends and colleagues who are constantly telling everyone how great you are. They expect nothing in return for sending you business, which is why they are ideal components in your warm market. They also tend to be the most uncommon. Their incentive? You make them look good when you do a good job. So the best strategy for maximizing your fans is to keep doing a great job and stay on their radar. Allies are referral sources who understand what you do and send business your way. But in exchange, they expect you to send some back, either by way of a referral fee or, more likely, a client referral for them. Their incentive? The referrals, introductions, or fee sharing you provide to them. So to maximize your allies, stay in consistent contact. Be proactive about offering referrals and introductions so that they do the same. Clients are often your best referral source. They have first-hand experience of your services, which is why their recommendation carries a lot of weight. While an ally can say, I think Jim would do a good job for you, it's only the client who can say, I hired Jim myself and he helped me resolve my problem. That first-hand testimonial carries a lot of weight. And that's the good news. The bad news is clients have no incentive. You provide service, they pay your fees. End of transaction. So what strategy can you use to encourage referrals from your best referral source? Well, it's tricky because referring isn't part of the client's role as they understand it, which is why you'll want to get them to expand their role. In your very first meeting with them, plant a referral seed. Let them know that as you work with them, they may from time to time encounter others who will require your services and that you would appreciate their recommendations when that happens. This plants the seed in their mind so they can get used to their referral role right away. That's one strategy. Let's take a closer look at the client base and identify some others. Within your client base, you'll find that you have three subcategories based on their likelihood to refer. An A client has referred in the past and you think it's likely that they will again. B clients have not referred yet, but you're optimistic that they will in the future, and you would be shocked to get a referral from a C client. They'll engage your services and pay your fees, but they won't bring in new business. It's just not in their nature. When you get a new client, you won't know if they'll turn out to be an A, B, or C. So the seed planting strategy we just reviewed should be used universally. And for your existing clients, whether they're A's, B's, or C's, you have to stay in front of them if you expect to maximize their referral potential. The question is, how? Some of your most effective strategies will be best suited for only the A's, so know which strategy to use with each category of client. For instance, it's a great idea to host a dinner party for your local A clients at least twice a year. But if you try to include all of your B's and C's, things could get out of control. Use this simple client filter matrix to identify a marketing strategy that will maximize referrals from each category. For example, send the A's a client appreciation gift during the holidays and schedule a quarterly lunch. The A's and B's get invited to an event every six months which features a speaker who would be of interest to your client base. A's, B's, and C's get a holiday card and a regular newsletter. By the way, we'll talk more about how to get those newsletters to pay off in an upcoming lesson. Reserve the higher touch, higher cost strategies for the A clients. But don't disregard the C's. They're still part of your business, and you never know. Some of them may develop into more productive connections in the future. Here are some recommended action steps to make this technique pay off for you. 1. Create a client filter by dividing your clients into A, B, and C and assign a marketing strategy for each client category. Alternatively, divide your referral sources into A, B, and C categories and assign activities to them. Two, 
give your client filter to your assistant and put them in charge of maintaining the system. 3. Plant a referral seed with your next new client. This was just one of the many business development lessons from Practice Boomers. Members receive a new client acquisition technique every week and Gold members get to participate in a mastermind conference call with other legal professionals so you can help each other put these techniques to work. Members report up to 40% increase in their book of business by applying themselves to this program. Pricing starts at $75 a month and you can try Practice Boomers for free for 14 days. Learn more at practiceboomers.com.